right. Hi, Dad. Hi, honey. Good morning. How's it going? Good. 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 Good, um, good morning to you and to everyone joining us today for Shamanic Sundays. Um, we're happy to have you guys here. Thanks to all the community members. Um, I'm here today in lieu of my sister. Um, we've kind of created this Shamanic Sundays together. It's been a collaborative effort and I'm usually behind the scenes. But today um, my sister had stuff that was going on for her. So here I am, um, a little horse, but I'm here nonetheless. Um, and we welcome you guys to um, comment or ask questions um, in the chat box and we'll try to answer them today. But if not, we'll try to get back to them um, another day. <laughs> Dad, um, do you want to open us up with a little prayer? Sure, yeah. Okay. Prayer of gratitude. It's great to see you. And thanks for stilling in for your sister. And, and um, just great to see your smiling face. So dropping in here with uh, gratitude for the gifts of grace in our lives. Great spirit, creator of the universe. Thank you for giving us the breath of life and, 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 and the opportunity to be alive, to, to experience the gifts of creation. Uh, learn and grow and help us wake up and, and wise up and, and, and remember the truth of who we are created by you, sacred, worthy, luminous beings. We are loved and we are loved and our love is forgiving and receiving. So live love now. Thank you for our ancestors, ancestor spirits of the land we're living on. I'm up in Rin right now, so it's Pomo Miwok people. The ancestor spirits of wherever you listeners are, remembering the ancestor spirits with gratitude. Our families, our communities, our, our work in the world, and, 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 and even the challenges of these times that we're living in because they give us opportunity to, to um, do our inner work so we can show up and create responses to the challenges to open the doorway and bring through healing, healing of the sacred hoop. And, and um, thank you for bringing us together today with, uh, with cyberspace and through Kimberly and Nicole, your help through all these shamanic Sundays and right now and all the listeners, blessings on your lives. Oh. So, thank, yeah. thank you for that, Dad. You're welcome. Um, so we're going to talk about, a, um, or somebody wrote in with a question um, about unhealthy patterns. And That's how- good. Can I interrupt you just for a second? Sure. You, you welcomed us with your, your beautiful smile, but you didn't introduce yourself or say anything about yourself. So uh, just for people who are seeing you for the first time here, um, just just share with them your name, just a little bit about yourself. Okay, my name is Nicole Ananda, which means joy, um, which my parents told me it's because I bring joy to the world. <laughs> I've been raised with that, which feels good. Um, I'm Tom's younger daughter and um, less comfortable in front of the camera, but I'm happy to be here. Yeah. And you have two grandsons and-, and uh, well, I have two sons. I mean, two sons. Yeah. My grandsons. Yeah. Yeah. One of them who's um, en route to Spain right now from Italy. So sending him good, safe journey, oh. um, protection, and um, a 17-year-old who's out and about. And one husband. And one husband. <laughs> <laughs> Justin. Oh, good man. Yeah. Justin. Yeah. Okay. So great. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. People, people, people uh, need to know who you are and a little bit about you. And in the future, they'll learn more about you and, and your different creative pursuits that uh, um, bring bring healing to the world. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So pregunta, what is the question? Um, it's about unhealthy patterns. And um, how we, um, why do we continue to do things in our lives that are unhealthy, that we know are unhealthy, um, you know, whether it's eating too much or getting into bad relationships or um, doing things that just don't serve us mentally or physically. Um, why do we choose to continue to do that, even though our conscious mind knows that it's not serving us? Mm -hmm. So the, the um, <clears throat> first, I'd like to reframe the question. Hold on, okay. Take a drink here. Oh, uh, like how can we use shamanic principles to stop unhealthy patterns of behavior? <clears throat> All right. So let me drop in here and see what comes through from that surrender to great spirit. <clears throat> Whatever you want to bring through me using 
He is a mouthpiece. <clears throat> so, um, let me make sure I understand the question. Why do we sometimes continue unhealthy patterns in whatever manifestation mode they might be when we make a conscious choice you know, not to have that second piece of cake? Um, right. You know, it's not good for our cholesterol or our weight or our, our peace of mind. Why do we continue uh, to do unhealthy patterns? And um, then what might there be shamanic techniques that could be helpful in uh, turning that situation around? Yes. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah. And there's, I mean, there's so many examples of unhealthy, you know, patterns that we all get into in our lives, yeah. whether it's, you know, relationships or, you know, choosing the wrong relationships. Um, you know, I sometimes I, I have a, you know, dog who's got bad allergies, as you know, and, you know, I watch him sneak into things and eat, you know, bad food. And, you know, a couple hours later, or not bad food, but food he's not supposed to eat that he has a reaction to, you know, and a few hours later to a few days later, he's can't stop scratching. So it's like, I've thought to myself, God, I wish he could see the result of his actions and understand, you know, and then make choices not to do that. And then I think, but wait, I don't always make choices, you know, that are good for me. And I'm a, you know, adult and I mean, a, you know, human being that can think in those ways and see the results. And I still make the wrong decisions sometimes. So I guess, yeah, yeah. a little guidance and mm -hmm. shamanic wisdom. Well, the first part of the question is a why question. And uh... There's, a, there's an old uh, spiritual tradition that speaks about um, the fact that we all have what they call an inner adversary. And it's, it just comes with, with our belly button, comes with part of being part of, a, of the human being. And that inner adversary is in there uh, to, to uh, tell us to take that, that unhealthy step, the, the thing that we know in our minds that that wouldn't be a good thing to do. This would not be a good relationship to enter into. I should not eat that food. I, you know, whatever uh, our conscious intention is for good, the inner adversary says, "No, no, 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 no. I got a better plan for you, a better idea. Here, come over here, and we'll go down this road." It tries to pull us off, tries to seduce us off uh, from our intention. And in the spiritual context, the spiritual uh, understand the framework of understanding, the ego responds to the inner adversary. With um, we get upset with ourselves, and we might feel guilty or, or judgmental about ourselves, or beat ourselves up for being weak, or making the same mistake again, or blowing it, or dropping the ball, or whatever whatever the unhealthy behavior might be. And um, and so it feels like a troublemaker. It feels like it's just it's just causing us problems here, getting us to do do unwise uh, decisions that are hurtful to us or hurtful to others behaviors but yet when they're expanding uh, consciousness the the uh, in framework the uh, inner adversary plays a very important role in our growth process because we didn't have that inner adversary trying to pull us off and seduce us into a b c or d whatever of unhealthy behavior then um there wouldn't be any there wouldn't be any growth work the growth comes from not staying in that comfort zone and just doing whatever we feel like, like doing, which is which is the animal instinct um, in us, which is in all of us, uh, the reptilian brain, the limbic brain, the, the functioning under the level of conscious uh, choices, but very much uh, an activator of a lot of what we do beneath the awareness of, of, of consciousness. So to, to, to become aware of, um, let's use that example of, the, of the, taking that second piece of, piece of cake. Well, yesterday, actually, I was in Whole Foods and I was getting some lunch and I was hungry. And I saw a um, really nice uh, uh, brand muffin that I really felt like having. And uh, it certainly wouldn't have killed me to have it. But the last two days prior, I'd had uh, some sweet uh, desserts. And, um, and so I knew that my system can only tolerate a certain amount of sugar. And uh, if I take more, my, my system lets me know about that. So now it's not sugar and flames, a little bit 
it's okay, but uh, you, you don't want to get into that on a regular basis. It's a powerful, it's a powerful drug effect, really, sugar. And, and so I knew I'd had enough and I needed to give myself my system a couple of days to clean out uh, and release that uh, so I could come back to a state of, you might say, cleanliness or puriness or, or purity or just good clean energy running through my pipes. Chi, monica, pouring, not clogged up or inflamed with sugar. And yet my, my temptation was, I knew that in my conscious mind, and my, te my temptation was, oh, come on, man. it's not going to kill you. It's, it's so, you're going to enjoy it. You know, you can, you, you can go the next day, you know, next three days or the rest of the week and not have any sugar. So go, just go ahead and, and take it. And I was really, I could feel the seductiveness of uh, my yetzer my, my inner adversary, <clears throat> trying to pull me off into a course that I knew would not be good for me. And so I engaged in, I had to engage in a battle with awareness of what I was feeling seduced to do that I knew wasn't the right thing for me to do. There was a tension. There was a tension between two parts of my brain, two parts of my mind, you might say. And um, it's in that tension that you might say brings, brings uh, enhances awareness to a decision, making a, making a decision consciously. And it's in that, that uh, working with that tension to, to overcome the, what the inner adversary is trying to pull you to do when you know it's not the right thing for you to do and you're gonna feel bad afterwards. Um, that, that's where the muscle gets strengthened. That's where the muscle of concentration gets strengthened. That's where the muscle of mind uh, gets strengthened. Because then you, it's, it's like you face that inner adversary and you see how it's trying to pull power from you and energy from you. But you say, no, you face it. You look in the eye and say, no, I'm not going to give you the energy to, to run my show here, to do something that I know is not going to be good for me to do. And so then you, with, with that awareness, that heightened awareness because of the tension, it's a, it's a battle, it's an inner struggle. It calls for what I call the warrior spirit engage in that inner battle is, is uh, put the energy back into what I know is right for me to do. I'm going to pass up that, set, that, that uh, red muffin today. I'm going to be good to myself. I'm going to be loving to myself. I'm going to strengthen my immune system. I'm going to strengthen all the powers of physical and physiological and energetic functions inside my lower consciousness being, my my, my the, the wisdom activities that take place below the threshold of awareness that know how to heal, that know how to uh, do amazing miracles of the physiological function in, in, in our bodies that we don't know how to, how to do. So I'm going to support that wisdom inside of me and I'm going to enhance it <clears throat> by doing what's right for me to do. And I'm going to feel good about it, that I, that I strengthen the muscle uh, instead of being seduced, allowing myself to be seduced by that, that inner adversary, I've strengthened the muscle that's going to that's gonna, uh, improve my ability in the future to overcome feeling seduced by that, by the uh, inner adversary trying to pull me off into, into doing something that's not, not for my greatest good. So I feel better about having done what was right for me. My, my, my energy gets brighter. I'm polishing up my stardust. It's a good example of inner work to polish up the inner stardust to shine through. I'm, true, I'm treating myself in a more loving way, helping my consciousness attune and connect with the, with the uh, love, light, essence, consciousness that I am. And that's the polishing up of, of waking up, wising up, and living love now. So that's one uh, set of dynamics that comes up in terms of um, uh, where and understanding where the, the energy comes from. To, to pull us off into doing unskillful and, and, and unhealthy behavior patterns. Another aspect is, is uh, and of course, all of this starts with intention as everything. Everything starts with intention. So we notice in our lives, the more we notice when we're being pulled off from what we, what we, we set our mind as being the way we want to go, uh, there's some energy is, it's taking place inside of us that, that's trying to meet a need. It's trying to meet a need through a specific behavior, like eating more when I'm not hungry. So instead of 
facing the inner adversary and putting the energy back in the power back and go, well, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna do this other behavior that I know is right for me. Um, I have to get, the, I have to gain the uh, permission of what in the Hawaiian, Hawaiian system is called the lower self, the, the uh, 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 uniapili, uniapili, lower self that, that uh, uh, of, of wisdom uh, within us that knows how to do all this physical and physiological and energetic functions to promote our health and our healing and our, and our wellness. And, um, and that's connected with our uh, limbic brain and our feelings and our reptilian brain, the, the animalness inside of us below the cerebral cortex that makes the conscious decisions. No, I don't want to have that. Uh, it's not good for me to have that second piece of cake while my, my right hand sticking out behind me to grab it. So when I'm paying attention because of the intention, it's basically saying I want to bring the power of my attention to really noticing when I catch myself and my awareness starting to do a behavior uh, that I know is not good for me. So I, in order to, to uh, be consistent with staying with that behavior that I know is good for me, I have to, I have to gain the... Um, the support and the alliance and, and the, uh, the joining of my, my reptilian brain and my uniapili, the lower, lower mind, three, three to your mind, the conscious mind, the lower mind, and the higher mind, the other core, the higher consciousness. So um, in order to fulfill what our conscious mind wants to do, we have to gain, as I said, we have to gain the acceptance and support, the approval of, of the, uh, the, the lower animal brain mind. Uh, lower self or else it's going to it's got a need that's not being met no matter what our conscious mind chooses uh, it's going to it's going to pull us off it's going to pull us off so that requires uh, more more polishing up stardust of going inside to see okay so what's the need that that as i'm reaching out for that second piece of cake when i know it's not good for me what's the need that's trying to be met there through, through the behavior, that strategy of eating a second piece of cake, which of course isn't gonna, like, might give a few moments of satiation with, with the sugar rush, is, is, is when that goes away, I'm gonna feel worse because I did something I know it wasn't right for me, for me to do. Right. So what's the deeper need? It requires dropping down deeper inside of us. So what, what's the deepest, deeper need that's not being met? So in that desire, this is an example for the second piece of cake, I'm feeling, um, I'm feeling sad. Okay, what am I, then drop down into what am I feeling sad about? I'm, I'm feeling lonely. I'm feeling, uh, uh, just dropping down into whatever the feelings are and given whatever the feelings are, what's the need there? I have a need to feel uh, love. I have a need to feel I'm cared for. I have a need to be uh, respected. I have a need to be validated. I need to have a need to be uh, feel affirmed. I have a need to feel uh, uh, important. I have a, whatever the need might be, you know, whatever our human needs are, uh, to to allow them to be. We don't have to act on them, but we need to, uh, with our feelings, to, to to see what they are and what those feelings are connecting us to a need. And then when we have clarity about what the need is, that second piece of cake isn't gonna address any of those needs. So then it gives me opportunity to open awareness, open myself to, to expand a consciousness, whatever shamanic techniques might work to open consciousness to a broader bandwidth, to open the spirit's presence, higher consciousness, uh, seeking guidance about, well, how can I meet this need in a way that promotes asking a question into that deeper wisdom because we have access to the infinite creative wisdom power of the universe we have access to that power that, that creates and maintains the universe in our lives and in the diversity of life and creation of the cosmos i mean it knows what it's doing it's been around for quite a while and, and it seems to be working quite well and we don't mess mess with it mess it up as we're so prone to do and our ignorance and our arrogance all connected with the ego identity reducing our identity to thinking we're just just the ego and forgetting that no we're we're we're, we're much more than that we're much bigger than that we're part of this infinite infinite creative right. power energy 
of the universe and then asking it for guidance. Okay, so how can I, how can I meet that need that you've identified in a way that serves my fullest blossoming and my greatest good and all who might be touched by how I move to meet this need in a healthy and skillful way. And I need to communicate, go down into my uniapillion lower self and, and, uh, and say, I hear you, what you're, what you're, what you're feeling. I, 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 I get your message that you're hurting, you need something. And uh, I'm here not to resist you, um, but to, uh, to help that need get met in a healthy way. So all the systems are in tune. It creates more harmony amongst all the three different parts of ourselves and, and the fullness of our being. And so we're able to walk in harmony and balance with the, with the pipes open to, act, to accessing that creative wisdom power of the universe for guidance about how to meet that need in a way that truly does serve sort of fullest blossoming and greatest good. So um, let me just listen and see if there's anything else that... Uh, but one other aspect of, of this. Wait, can ahead. I say something before yeah. you go into that? Also just applying it to relation. I mean, it, I guess it's it's applicable to everything you do, what you're saying. Yeah. But in the with the cake example, it's like in the moment, right? So it's like just that impulse control, control and, you know, um, everything. But with relationships, like so many people choose unhealthy relationships and like with those patterns, I guess it's just the daily practice of doing all these things that you're sharing um, to help strengthen that muscle so that you can make those choices and, and see what, what, you know, you're missing out on or what you're feeling sad about that you can then bring that strength and that awareness into all of your relationships. So you make better choices in that regard. Yeah. Like, in, like in, in terms of relationships, I mean, one of the things that we all need is to feel respected. That our feelings and our thoughts, while not necessarily agreed with by our partner, but but respected, we have a right to our feelings and thoughts, and and a willingness on, to, to to listen to and learn about what, what the other person's thinking and feeling and where it's coming from, and and um, and so that opens the doorway up for 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 how to explore mutual needs, uh, you know, in a, or whatever our needs are in a ways that that promote growth, healthy growth, and respect in the relationship. So if I'm clear, clear that um, I have a need to be respected in a relationship and I set an intention of that's something I want in a relationship, conscious mind makes that choice. So then if I'm interacting with a new person, I'm dating a new person or exploring a relationship with somebody and I have a need for that respect, if I feel I'm being treated in a disrespectful way by the other person, then that's something, then it's on me to say something about that. Not to blame or judge the other person, but to share the information of, um, I have a need, you know, to feel, feel respected and, and, and I feel like what you're gonna feel hurt by what you just said or the way you said it or whatever it is. And, um, and so then I wanna see how the other person responds. Most likely they didn't, they might've done that and said or done something, you know, they weren't consciously aware of it. So to me, the important thing is to not judge the other person, just give them feedback about the impact on you, on me, about what they said or did. And then I want to see how they respond. Right. You know, do they respond defensively? Um, do they put, put it back on me? Um, get angry or upset or close down? Or, or are they open to looking at their own behavior because they care about me and its impact? On yeah. Me? So <clears throat> they... When I when I share the truth of what's happening for me, excuse me, <clears throat> without judging the other person or making them wrong or bad, just saying the truth. When you do behavior A, this is, uh, it triggers this feeling inside of me, and uh, I need to talk about that with you. Um, so if they're open to working with that, that's a sign to me I'm being respected. So I want to. This is a relationship I want to continue, as compared to. The response of uh, the person not willing to, to look at their own behavior and its impact on me and, and explore how to work with, with whatever their need was in trying to, and what they said or did, it was not skillful in terms of our relationship. They're willing to look and work on that. And I am on my end when it comes back to me. 
um, that's what grows us in the relationship. So if, yeah. if, if I'm not getting that response, then this is a sign that uh, this is not a healthy relationship for me. Definitely. Yeah. So we're, um, we're almost, we, we, I, oh. I know we, we, we have to end a little early uh, uh, today because you have a, a, another call at 1030. So but I do question? have a question from yeah. somebody. Okay, go ahead. Um, and it's it's all related, but it's on the flip side. What keeps me from doing that which I know contributes to my well-being? Well, again, so go down inside your your lower yeah. self there, and and it's, it's got an agenda that it doesn't want to cooperate with that. It's got some needs going on there that that behavior that you want to do isn't isn't going to meet. And so I need to go down in there and, and say, so what do you want? What do you really need? What's going on for you? That listening in that deeper self and then using whatever uh, shamanic techniques might work for you to open your awareness to larger, to connection with spirit and using that power to help you overcome it, to meet the need in a, in a, in a good way and overcome the inner adversary to put your energy and attention into what it is you do want to do. Yeah. Um, so thank you. That's yeah. great. I will, I will listen to that and try to work on those things myself. Yeah. Um, so thank you. Um, also, because we are looking at time and stuff, is there a way that you can lead us in a visualization um, about flipping the switch to choose healthy patterns and behaviors? Well, let's just drop right in, take the elevator, close our eyes, drop in, take the elevator down, way deep down inside of us to where the wisdom lives that knows how to do <laughs> amazing things promoting our health and our healing and setting our intention clearly and consciously setting an intention of awareness heightening awareness to notice when i choose to do something that's healthy for me skillful interaction and I notice because I'm paying attention, I set this intention, the inner adversary inside of me is trying to pull me off to do, to not do that healthy behavior and do something else instead. I bust it, I confront it. It's like, a, you know, I tackle it, tackle it right now and look it right in the eye and say, no, I'm not giving you the power to run the show. I open myself up to listening to what your need is. What is it that, that you need? that's not gonna be met by this, you know, what I wanna do that's healthy. Maybe I need to explain why I'm doing it and, and how, it, how the lower self is gonna benefit from the action and listen to why it's resisting it. Try to understand why it's resisting it. What do you need that this isn't gonna meet or are you frightened of or you want differently? Uh, what, what's the deepest need here? So listening to that and then accessing the wisdom creative power of the universe through opening your consciousness to the wider bandwidth and asking for guidance, wisdom guidance about how to meet that need in a way that strengthens me, strengthens you, strengthens us in our ability to stay focused with our intention, acting on our intention more consistently, more frequently, more powerfully, with joy, grace, and gratitude. And may it be so. Oh, thank you, yes. Oh, thank you, Poppy. It was good to be here with you today and um, thank you to you and thank you for your life and um, for everyone from the community that joined today. And um, please like follow us and tell your friends and we hope to see you again next Sunday. Yeah, and thank you, Nicole, for, for doing what you did today and so yeah. happy uh, viewers get to get to meet my, my other daughter, beautiful it's, other daughter. It's thank nice you. to be here with you. I love you. Love you. Bye. Thank you. Have a good Sunday, everybody. Yeah. Love you.